join Forum IS Academy, trusted by hundreds of toppers, including IS Rank 1 Shruti Sharma. Good evening aspirants, welcome to the Hindu news analysis discussion brought to you by Forum IAS for the date 11th May 2023. These are the list of news articles for today's discussion. We will be covering 5 topics, each from polity, governance, science and technology and a topic from environment. Alongside this we will also be discussing 2 previous year prelims questions. So straight away let us move to our first topic. First article. Delhi versus center. The question is who has control over the bureaucrats? This news article is regarding the case that is in Supreme Court. The case is between the union government and the union territory of Delhi regarding the control of bureaucracy. The Delhi government took this matter to the Supreme Court to ensure that civil services come under their control. Since this case judgment will be known to us in few days, we are waiting for an authoritative pronouncement on the question of functional and administrative control over civil services. With this, let us know about the constitutional provisions regarding the union territories, national capital territory of Delhi and about the recently passed uh, NCT Delhi Act of 2021. First is union territories. See, union territories were constituted in the year 1956 by the 7th Constitutional Amendment Act and the States Reorganization Act. Here you have to know that some of these union territories have been elevated to statehood also. They are the states of Himachal Pradesh, Manipur, Tripura, Mizoram, Arunachal Pradesh and Goa which were formerly union territories. Currently there are 8 union territories namely Andaman and Nicobar, Chandigarh, Dadra and Nagar Haveli and Daman and Diyu, National Capital Territory of Delhi, Jammu Kashmir, Lakshadweep, Ladakh and Puducherry. Here the union territories have been created for a variety of reasons. The reasons are like political and administrative con uh, considerations, uh, then cultural distinctiveness, strategic importance such as Andaman and Nicobar and uh, Lakshadweep, then special treatment and care of backward and tribal people are also one of the reasons for the creation of union territories. Know that article 239 to 241 in the part 8 of the constitution deals with union territories and there is no uniformity in their administrative structure. Every union territory is administered by the president through an administrator appointed by him. So we have to know that administrator of a union territory is an agent of central government and is not the head of a state like the governor. And moreover the president can appoint the governor of a state as the administrator of an adjoining union territory. Be clear, not all the union territories have administrator, some are directly governed by the president also. If we take the powers of parliament to make laws in union territories, the parliament can make laws on any subject of the three lists, including the state list for the union territories. Also, the president himself can make regulations for the peace, progress and good government of Andaman and Nicobar Islands, Lakshadweep. Dadra, Nagar, Haveli and Daman and Diyu sort of union territories. Then know that a regulation made by president has the same force and effect as an act of the parliament. Besides that the parliament can establish a high court for union territories. These are certain provisions that are mentioned in the law by the parliament with respect to union territories. Now coming to the constitutional provisions for Delhi, article 239 of Indian constitution says Union territory shall be administered by the president through an administrator who is appointed by the president. In case of Delhi, lieutenant governor is appointed by the president. Then under the article 239A, it provides for creation of local legislatures or council of ministers or both for certain union territories. In that manner only, article 239AA of the Indian constitution was added by the 69th Constitutional Amendment Act of 1991. This article says that Union Territory of Delhi shall be called the National Capital Territory of Delhi and the administrator appointed under the Article 239 shall be designated as Lieutenant Governor. Under the same article, there will be a Legislative Assembly for the National Capital Territory. 
this assembly shall make laws on matters enumerated in state list except three subjects they are public order police and land these three subjects that is the public order police and land will be taken care by the union government if any law made by the legislative assembly of union territory with respect to any matter if it is in conflict to any provisions of the law made by the parliament then the parliamentary law will only prevail so if the law made by union territory is in contrary to the parliamentary law then the law made by union territory will be declared null and void but if a law made by the legislative assembly of union territory is reserved for the president's consideration and if it received the president assent then such law shall prevail in the national capital territory of delhi know that there shall be a council of ministers in union territory of delhi but it shall not be more than one tenth of the total members of legislative assembly the council of ministers will be headed by the chief minister at its apex to aid and advise the lieutenant governor in exercise of his or her function and know that in case of difference of opinion between the council of ministers and lieutenant governor the lieutenant governor can refer it to the president for the president's decision and shall act according to the directions given by the president so these are the provisions which are mentioned in the constitution now let us see the salient features of nct of delhi act 2021 the nct act uh, mainly amends four clauses of the government of national capital territory of delhi act 1991 first is the section 21 this section deals with the restriction on laws passed by the legislative assembly concerning certain matters the amendment act provides that the term government Uh, referred in any law made by the legislative assembly will imply lieutenant governor of union territory from now onwards and in the section 24 that deals with the assent to bills passed by legislative assembly and in section 24 that deals with the assent to bills passed by the legislative assembly it says the lieutenant governor will reserve the bills for the consideration of president in few matters it includes bills that diminish the powers of high court but in the new nct of delhi act uh, it requires the lieutenant governor to reserve bills for the president that incidentally covers any of the matters outside the purview of legislative assembly so the power of uh, lieutenant governor to refer the matter to president has been widened now then in the section 33 it mentions that the legislative assembly will make rules to regulate the procedure and conduct of business in assembly but now the 2021 nct act states that such rules must be consistent with the rules of procedure and conduct of business in the lok sabha and in section 44 dealing with the conduct of business accordingly all executive decisions taken by the elected government shall be under the lieutenant governor's name the 2021 act empowers the lieutenant governor to specify his or her suggestions on certain matters his opinion has to be taken before making any executive action on the decisions of ministers or council of ministers and adding to this the issue of uh, control over bureaucracy has now been taken to the judiciary we have to wait for the judgment now let us see how it goes but as the suggestion what we can say is the new act should be reconsidered in the light of justice dy chandrachut's note in the 2018 verdict in which he says in a democratic form of government the real power must subsist in the elected arms of the state a cautious discussion and deliberation should take place between the center and delhi government on the ambiguous provisions this will help in the eradication of unconstitutional and undemocratic provisions and apart from that the government and the center and the states must cooperate to make sure that lieutenant governor can discharge its constitutional functions so that is all about the topic here in this topic we saw about union territories national capital territory of delhi and about the uh, salient features of nct delhi act 2021 with this let us close the topic here second topic a ground view of the indian space policy 2023 this opinion section is about the indian space policy 2023 let us know about the policy first then let us know about the opinion of the author see the global space policy is currently valued at about us dollars 360 billion despite being one of one among a few space faring nations in the world india accounts for only about 2% of space economy and in the last two decades if you see the private sector has played an important role in other space faring countries like us and in countries over europe 
you could have heard companies like SpaceX, Blue Origin and Arian Space have revolutionized the space sector by reducing cost and turnaround time. And they have also come up with innovations and advanced technology. But in India, the private sector uh, in space sector has been limited to just being vendors or suppliers to the government space program. Thus, there was a need to provide better scope for non-governmental entities for enhanced participation in the Indian space program. And moreover, uh, private players could play key roles to boost India's market share in the global space economy. So to make this happen, India has come up with a policy, new space policy of 2023. And although this policy got approved in the first week of April by the cabinet, the policy was made public recently only. And this article is regarding that. Let us see what the policy is all about. See, this policy in short opens the door for enhanced participation of non-governmental entities, especially the private sectors, in carrying out end-to-end -end activities in the space domain and with an aim to provide them a level playing field. And secondly, the policy wants to augment space capabilities and encourage, enable and develop a flourishing commercial presence in space sector and then use space as a driver of technological development and derived benefits in the allied areas. Then using this policy, the government envisions to pursue international relations like sharing of technology with developing countries or allowing the private players to have partnership with the private players of other countries. Through this way, the government plans to use space sector as a soft power to hold influence. And then the policy creates an ecosystem for effective implementation of space applications among all stakeholders. This is what even our Prime Minister has been saying. He often asserts that the benefits of space technology should be made known to every Indian citizen who will in turn become stakeholders in the development of this sector. For that, effective implementation of space applications are needed, right? That is addressed in this policy. Then like the Prime Minister often says, we should know space sector has the potential to develop a vibrant ecosystem of startups and private industry. The policy addresses that also. In this article also, uh, we can see mentioning about the role of private sector. We have to know that through this policy, the government has adopted an holistic approach by encouraging and promoting greater private sector participation in the entire value chain of space economy. This also includes the creation of space and ground-based assets by the private sector. And so now the role of government will be limited. For example, if you take the government will now focus more on providing public goods and services using space technology for national priorities. And then the government will create a regulatory framework for ensuring a level playing field among the private players in the space sector. Then the government will promote sp uh, space related education and innovation, including support to space sector startups. So we can see that the role of government has changed from being a sole player in this uh, space sector to becoming a facilitator by encouraging the private sectors. For this only, our government has established a center in the name In Space, Indian National Space Promotion and Authorization Center. See, In Space is an independent nodal agency under, under the Department of Space that allows the private sector in performing space activities. This center aims to provide a level playing field for private companies to use the Indian space architecture. Know that in space will act as a channel between ISRO and any private players that want to participate in space activity. So through this way, the lengthy bureaucratic procedures will now be eliminated. So in other words, in space will be acting as a single window clearance and as an authorization agency for space launches, establishing space uh, launch pads, buying and selling satellites, etc. And then this center will be beneficial in two ways. First is that it allows more research and scholarly work by individuals who have capabilities. For example, encouraging something similar to SpaceX in India. Secondly, the center will allow ISRO to focus on more challenging missions and especially next generation technology development. Then the article mentions about the NSIL which has already executed few commercial space launches. See, NSIL was established in the year 2019. It is completely government owned undertaking 
which is a central public sector enterprise. It is under the administrative control of Department of Space. The objective of it is to commercially exploit the research and development work of ISRO. In short, we can say it allows the private sectors to make use of the technology that are developed by the ISRO. If we take the mandate, its mandate includes owning satellites for Earth, Earth observation and communication applications, providing space-based services, then it includes building satellites and launching them as per demand, then providing launch services, building launch vehicles, space-based services, satellite building, then technology transfer to Indian industries. These are few of the functions of NSIL. Though this was established in the year 2019, well before the space policy, we have to note that the function of NSIL is in line with the policy that aims to promote private participation. Then the policy mentions that Department of Space will provide overall policy guidelines and the nodal department for the implementation of space technology and added that Department of Space will coordinate international cooperation in the area of global space governance and programs in consultation with Ministry of External Affairs. And finally, one of the main aspect of this policy is regarding the open data access from ISRO's remote sensing satellite. This is a huge opportunity because remote sensing satellites will provide enormous data ranging from assessment of uh, crop productivity, locating groundwater resources, mineral exploration, etc. Which means now uh, these satellite images will be freely available. Using this satellite data, the private players can build consumer based applications which will boost the application aspect of space technologies. So these are few areas uh, of the policy which are covered in the article. This is uh, enough regarding the policies. Uh, here the author is mentioning that the new policy is different from the previous draft and versions of policies framed by the government of India. Firstly, the focus of space policy is on civilian and peaceful applications. And we can infer that defense oriented space security policy document will be a separate document. So roping the private sector and focusing on the civilian application is a different approach from the government this time. Secondly, the policy spells out the role of Department of Space and Institutions such as InSpace and NSIL. Thirdly, ISRO decides to dilute its role in manufacturing of operational space system and leave the vacant space for commercial exploitation. So now the ISRO will focus on R&D in advanced technology to prove newer systems. These are different approaches that are undertaken by the government this time. Then the author reports certain gaps in the policy document. He says that no time frame within which required action needs to be taken by the departments or institution. And here he suggests that clear rules and regulations are needed. And these has to be related to FDI, licensing, government procurement, etc. Finally, he suggests that regulatory bodies require legislative authority to authorize space activities for all. That is for both government and non-government entities. So these are the opinion uh, which are provided by the author. So from this news article, we saw about new space policy 2023, about in space, NSIL and also about the opinion provided by the author. So with this, let us close the topic here. Third topic, Shanti Niketan may be added to World Heritage List. This news article reports that Shanti Niketan has been recommended for inclusion on UNESCO's World Heritage List. So from this article's discussion, let us know more about Shanti Niketan World Heritage Site and about UNESCO. First is regarding Shanti Niketan. See, it was started by Rabindranath Tagore. His concept is not limited to education alone. It seeks to bring life in harmony with all existence. So. He dismissed any pedagogy that uh, sought to isolate children from the world around them. For this, he put his uh, philosophy into practice at Santini Ketan, which is called the abode of peace. Classes at uh, Santini Ketan were held outdoors under an assigned tree, unless it was raining or if the lesson needed a laboratory. Here, students carry small mats to sit on the ground and teachers sat on the cement seats. The approach was to help the children to learn through exploration in arts, music, curiosity and the careful observation of nature. Here know that there was no concept of corporal punishment. 
This is how Shantiniketan functioned. This is said to become a World Heritage Site, which is designated by the UNESCO. Here, a site identified as World Heritage Site becomes a location of outstanding universal value. This signifies the exceptional culture uh, and natural significance of the site, which is of common importance for present and future generation. Now, let us know about uh, UNESCO. The United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization is a specialized agency of the United Nations. It was outlined in the constitution signed in the year 1945. UNESCO promotes international collaboration in education, science, culture to promote peace. Know that the headquarters of UNESCO is in Paris, France. It has around 195 member countries and it pursues its objective through five major programs. They are uh, education, natural sciences, social and human sciences, culture and communication and information. If we take the important reports published by uh, UNESCO, they are Global Education Monitoring Report and the Gender Parity Index. Now let us see the functions. UNESCO seeks to build peace through international cooperation in education, sciences and culture. Then UNESCO's program contribute to the achievement of SDG defined in Agenda 2030, which are adopted by the UN General Assembly. UNESCO also aims at assisting, supporting and complementing the national efforts of member states to eliminate illiteracy and to expand free education. Fourthly, UNESCO also seeks to encourage the free exchange of ideas and knowledge by organizing conferences and providing clearhouse and exchange services. Besides its support of uh, educational and science program, UNESCO is also involved in efforts to protect the natural environment and humanity's common natural heritage. Then importantly, UNESCO is known for World Heritage Mission, which encourages world countries to protect natural and cultural heritage sites. Finally, know that UNESCO also leads the Man and Biosphere program for protecting biosphere reserves across the world. 12 out of uh, 18 India's biosphere reserves are a part of World Network of Biosphere Reserves based on the UNESCO's Man and Biosphere Program list. So that is all about UNESCO from exam point of view. So from this discussion we saw about Santini Ketan and the philosophy of uh, Rabindranath Tagore. Alongside this we also dealt with UNESCO. So with this let us close the topic here. Fourth topic, NCLT admits go first insolvency plea allows moratorium on leases. The news is that National Company Law Tribunal admitted Go Airlines plea for voluntary insolvency and NCLT also granted protection under moratorium from adverse actions by lenders, DGCA, airports and fuel suppliers. From this article, let us know about NCLT and DRT from exam point of view. First is about the National Company Law Tribunal. See, it is a quasi-judicial body that governs the companies in India. It was formed under the recommendations of Justice Iradi Committee of Insolvency and Winding Up of Companies. It was established in the year 2016 under the Companies Act of 2013 and this NCLT is the successor body of company law board. If we take the powers, it has the same powers that were assigned to the erstwhile company law board. So now NCLT deals with the winding up of companies which was available only with high courts previously. And the National Company Law Tribunal has been given the power of board for industrial and financial reconstruction which previously dealt with revival of sick companies. Then know that every member of NCLT shall hold office for a period of 5 years subjected to 65 years of age criteria and they can hold for the period of 5 years from the date of entering upon office. Members are eligible for reappointment for another term of 5 years. Then know that decisions of the tribunal may be appealed to the National Company Law Appellate Tribunal the decision of which may be further appealed to the Supreme Court of India. Now let us see about the National Company Law Appellate Tribunal. This board was also established in the year 2016 under the 
Companies Act of 2013. The Company Law uh, Appellate Tribunal is also the quasi judicial body in India that adjudicates issues relating to Indian companies. It holds appellate jurisdiction over the cases judged by National Company Law Tribunal. The NCLAT accepts and analyzes the decisions that were taken by National Company Law Tribunal. Know that NCLAT analyzes facts and evidences also. As said earlier, any person aggrieved by the orders of National Company Law Tribunal can appeal any orders on question of law and fact within 45 days to NCLAT. And if any person aggrieved by the orders of this appellate tribunal, then they can appeal on question of law within 60 days to the Supreme Court of India. This is all about NCLT and uh, NCLAT. Now let us know about Debt Recovery Tribunal. Debt Recovery Tribunal has been established following the passage of Recovery of Debt Dues to uh, Bank and Financial Institution Act. The primary goal and function of DRT is the recovery of loaned money from borrowers which is owed to banks and financial institutions from customers. This tribunal is also the second court of appeal in respect of cases filed under the Surface Act of 2002. This is nothing but the Securitization and Reconstruction of Financial Assets and Enforcement of Security Interest Act 2002. Here the petitions uh, against orders passed through DRTs comes before the Debt Recovery Appellate Tribunal. Now, uh, considering the composition of uh, Debt Recovery Tribunal, DRT is presided over by the presiding officer who is appointed by the central government and they shall be qualified to be district judge with a tenure 5 years or up to the age of 62. Now, let us see the jurisdiction of uh, DRT. An application for recovery of debt can be made to DRTs for all debts valued at more than 20 lakhs. For lesser amount, the banks and financial institutions can approach civil courts. Know that no court in the country other than the Supreme Court and High Court and that too only under Article 226 and 227 of the Constitution have jurisdiction against the judgment of DRAT. So that is all about uh, Debt Recovery Tribunal. So from this news article, we saw about National Company Law Tribunal. National Company Law Appellate Tribunal and also about the Debt Recovery Tribunal. So with this let us close the topic here. Fifth topic, study on sludge fines high potential for use as fertilizer after treatment. The article reports about the analysis that was done on the uh, sludge found in Indian sewage treatment plants. This analysis is saying that there is a high potential to extract the required minerals from the sludge and make them into fertilizers that will be useful for agri sector. And the article has mentioned about the national mission for clean Ganga and about the Earth Ganga initiative. Let us see about that here. Before knowing about the national mission for clean Ganga, you have to know about Namami Ganga mission. See Namami Ganga mission is an integrated conservation mission which was launched by the union government in the year 2014. A uh, budget outlay of uh, 20,000 crores was allotted to accomplish the twin objectives. They are to make effective abatement of pollution, then to conserve and rejuvenate the river Ganga. Here know that Ministry of Jal Shakti is responsible for its implementation and the National Mission for Clean Ganga and its state counterpart organizations are in charge of putting the program into action. Now, if we take the main pillars of the uh, Namami Ganga program, they are to establish sewerage treatment infrastructure, river surface cleaning, afforestation programs, then public awareness, establishing Ganga grams, etc. Now, if we take the national mission for clean Ganga, know that it is a statutory authority established under the National Council for River Ganga Act of 2016. In the year 2016, the government issued a notification to authorize the National Mission for Clean Ganga to exercise powers under the Environment Protection Act of 1986. Now, coming to the Earth Ganga Initiative, its origin was in the year 2019 when PM first introduced the concept of Earth Ganga during the first National Ganga Council meeting held in Kanpur. 
where our prime minister urged for a shift from namami ganga to the model of arth ganga the definition of arth ganga means it focuses on sustainable development of ganga and its surrounding areas by focusing on the economic activities related to the river the arth ganga model seeks to use economics to bridge people with the river as it strives to contribute at least 3% of the gdp from the ganga basin itself if we take the features of arth ganga the government is working on six verticals first is the zero budget natural farming it involves uh, chemical free farming on 10 kilometers on either side of the river and promotion of cow dung as fertilizer through the gobardhan scheme second is the monetization and reuse of sludge and waste water then the third one is regarding the livelihood opportunities by creating uh, huts where people can sell local products medicinal plants and ayurveda fourth is the public participation by increasing synergies between the stakeholders involved in the river ecosystem then the fifth is to promote cultural heritage and tourism of ganga uh, through boat tourism adventure sports and conducting yoga activities then the final uh, pillar is the promotion of institutional building by empowering local administration for improved water governance so this is all about arth ganga so from this article we saw about namami ganga program uh, and about the national mission for clean ganga from exam point of view so with this let us complete our uh, news articles discussion here and move to the previous year prelims questions now now coming to the previous year prelims question consider the first question in india extended producer responsibility was introduced as an important feature in which of the following the options given are option a biomedical waste management and handling rules to 1998 option b the recycled plastic manufacturing and usage rules 1999 option c the e waste management and handling rules 2011 option d the food safety and standard regulation 2011 see the extended producers uh, responsibility is the main feature of e waste management and handling rules 2011 according to this rule the producer of electrical and uh, electronic equipments will have the responsibility of managing such equipment after its end of life thus the producer is responsible for their products uh, once the consumer discards them so the correct answer for this question is option c e waste management and handling rules of the year 2011 consider the second question there are two statements given here uh, the first statement says the constitution of india classifies the ministers into four ranks cabinet minister minister of state with independent charge minister of state and deputy minister second statement says the total number of ministers in the union government including the prime minister shall not exceed 15 percentage of the total number of members in the lok sabha which of these statements given above is or are correct the options given are option a one only option b two only option c both one and two option d neither one nor two see article 74 of the constitution provides that there shall be council of ministers with the prime minister as the head to aid and advise the president and by that way president acts in accordance with such advice given by the council of ministers but however its classification is not mentioned in the constitution so the first statement is wrong and know that the classification of uh, council of ministers into a three tier body is based on british parliamentary conventions only so first statement is wrong now we are left with uh, option b or option d uh, if we take the second statement we have to know by the 91st constitutional amendment act in the year 2003 uh, the constitution introduced article 751a which states uh, union council of ministers cannot exceed more than 15 percentage of the total number of members in lok sabha so this statement is correct here so the answer for this question is option b two only so with this we have come to the end of uh, news articles and previous year prelims question discussion uh, with this let us uh, wind up the discussion here 
so if you like the video and if you can un understand the concepts well please give a like share comment and subscribe to forum ias academy in various social media platforms for further updates thank you for listening